I'm not a female and I'm a promoter. Uh, I've used Jay Lethal a couple of times in Great North Wrestling about nine years ago. My experiences were good with him. Uh, obviously, there was, there's something going on with you guys, I guess. The fans wanted me to ask you about, is it has it been resolved or uh, is it still kind of a dispute that's ongoing? No, it's, it's not resolved and I'm glad you didn't have bad experiences. I don't wish bad experiences on anybody. And I think that's what a lot of people don't understand because they listen to everybody else's narratives. You know, I'm not the only one that has issues. You know, if you start following the breadcrumbs that are out there of, of evidence and of proof, you'll realize, you know, I came forward in 2018 before this was trending, before it was popular. You know, it was it was hard. I got so much hate. I got so much backstabbing and so much of everything, you know, but I wasn't the only one that came forward. Two other people came forward anonymously. I don't know if they've, you know, weathered the storm so to speak, that comes with it, you know. In 2019, a guy comes forward. You know, 2020, another girl comes forward. It's like, how, how many people will have to come forward before they realize there's a problem? And, and, you know, the findings have never been released. So ask yourselves why this is. So we're, we're what, over two years now? Um, ask yourself why. Ask yourself why an investigation that was released over 40 days ago, there's still nothing being said. You know, there's a lot of proof that's out there and I provided a lot of it in 2016 privately and 2017 privately, which a lot of people don't know. And then I came forward publicly in 2018. People don't realize those things because they're private um, and they were kept private. Um, so when people say that they were unaware, it's a lie. You, no, you were mean aware. I have, I have, documents saying that you were aware that have your logo on it your label on it so people have been aware for a very long time that there are bad things going on in wrestling and the speaking out movement made me happy and it was sad to see similar stories like when you read so many of those stories i hope the fans do and don't at the same time because it'll make the fans depressed too and we saw that there was people that left social media not because of hate but because it was just so overwhelming for them and that's how it feels to to people that have to go through it every single day. And um, the only thing you can do is just tell the truth and, and, and try to be the solution instead of the problem and to do the right thing. Just do the right thing. You know, lying doesn't help anybody. And... and and, and you don't get a, you don't get good attention from this kind of stuff, people. You you don't. You get death threats. You get stabbed in the back by men and women. Like it's not it's not like it's not. I am woman. Hear me roar and down with all men. No, I love men's wrestling. I love wrestling. I went back after I started wrestling to watch all the wrestling I missed from like the seventies and the eighties, the territory days. You know, all this stuff. I love wrestling. I want to see it grow and succeed. I want to see the numbers come back. During coronavirus, the numbers shouldn't be going down in ratings. They should be going up in viewerships. You know, people don't have stuff to do. I want to see the business thrive. But I also don't want to see people getting taken advantage of. And I don't want to see any more nepotism. And I don't want to see any more bad things. And 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 all you can do is tell the truth. And, and that's what I did. And, and like I said earlier, you know, people are going to paint their narratives of you and you can't change their minds because at the end of the day, the only way you'll change somebody's mind is if they already wanted it to be changed. People will think whatever it is they want. And, and what people need to understand is, um, for example, Hannibal, think back throughout your whole career. Have you ever met somebody that you looked up to and they were just a complete jerk to you? Yes. <laughs> now, were they talented in the ring? Because you looked up to them, so they must have been talented, right? Of course, yeah. Okay, so let me add an additional follow-up question. When they were a jerk to you, did that change the fact that they were a talented performer? No. And no. that's my point. Having talent doesn't make you a good person. They're not mutually exclusive, and that's what I want people to understand is it's not about money, it's not about getting a job back, 
I, I quit myself. The dirt sheets that are friends with people, wink, tried to say that I was fired. I just said I was fired. I never said that. I have the proof that I wasn't fired. I quit, you know, and that's just another very good example of people need to paint other people a certain way because, like I said, their illusions are so shattered. But whenever I do conventions, for example, Hannibal, I always ask people, so how long have you been wrestling? Have you met some of your favorite wrestlers? How did you enjoy the show? Like WrestleCon, for example, I loved WrestleCon. I get to meet people from all over the world and all kinds of stuff. And it would always break my heart if they would share with me like a negative experience. Like they're like one person, they were from, um, gosh, they were from somewhere in China. I don't know how to pronounce it, but I just remember they were from China. And they said that they waited over two hours to meet this wrestler. And the wrestler didn't even look them in the face. They just like took the money, wrote something, and then tossed it down the table to the next person in line. It was like a gauntlet style table and you had to wait and stuff. And that person had come all the way from China to meet that person, watched them for years, and that broke my heart. You know, I think we've all been there, but that's a conscious I've had that experience with it, their best. as I'm sure you have. Yeah, I did. And, and years later, I ended up being on shows with that person. So it kind of all comes full circle. All you have to do is be a good person. That's all I want is for people. I want for people to succeed and to feel, fulfill their dreams. I don't want people to have to go through bad stuff. I don't want to wish bad experience on people. Just tell the truth and do and, and the right thing and know that you'll be okay. You know, bullying doesn't, doesn't need to happen. Being... Being a jerk doesn't need to happen, and, and all these other bad things don't need to happen. But also, too, is if you don't want to believe it, okay, I can't change your mind. But at least look at the proof. Like, look at how many people are, are coming forward. Eventually, when you see enough smoke, you're going to know that there's fire for a reason. And I mean, let's I mean, this isn't unheard of. And at this point, what more is there that, that can be said, you know? So I'm glad that you didn't have bad experiences, but I unfortunately can't say the same. I told you I don't want that. Like that's not the type of person I am and that's not how I was raised. And I hope that that, that shows because if I, I never wrestle again after coronavirus, like, I will still be saying the same thing. I love wrestling and I want it to be a better place because I didn't come into it because I hated it. You didn't come into it because you hate it. Oh, I hate wrestling. So I'm going to be a wrestler. Like nobody says that. Nobody watches wrestling because they hate it. Nobody gets into it because they hate it. I don't want to leave it hating it. And I don't want other people to leave it hating it. I want it to be fun. Like it used to be. I want it to be awe inspiring and cool again. Um, like D'Lo Brown said, he's, you know, he said after coronavirus come 2021, he, he said, I want to make wrestling something people want to watch again. And I love that. I agreed with that. You know, when he said that on my podcast, I was like that right there, that. <laughs> well, I don't know if I have faith in him, but good luck to him. Thank you for watching the Hannibal TV. Please like this video if you enjoyed it and click the subscribe button to not miss any of our latest shoot interviews, match videos, or news updates. Support us on Patreon.com for $1.99 a month to watch our full shoot interviews ad-free and help our channel grow. Follow us on Twitter at The Hannibal TV for instant updates.